Chester, how are we doing today? Yay! Where's everyone here from today? Have we got anyone in from London? Give us a cheer. No? No. Anyone from... Who's local? Who's in Manchester? Who's from here? Yay! Hey, that's a nice show out. Thank you for coming and supporting. Anyone else here? Anyone from Newcastle? <laughs> My home city is Portsmouth, so it might just be me here, but there we go, representing. Right, so cool. Thank you everyone for coming along today. Um, it's, a very ex it's a very exciting event here, and I know all the other speakers appreciate you coming along because it's a great cause. Again, what we're aiming to do today, we're trying to raise awareness about child abuse, and the aim of this rally is to try and link it to, link it to a campaign where we're going to lobby the government to try and introduce a 25-year minimum sentence for all child predators. But this rally today, this rally is not about politics. It's not about left or right wing. We're here for one reason, and one reason only, and that is to protect our children. We're here to speak for those who have faced, or are currently facing, horrific abuse. We are here to defend those who cannot protect themselves. And we are here to provide hope to every individual who feels their desperate cries for help have fallen on deaf ears. We are here to show every survivor across the United Kingdom that we, the British people, care. We are here to demand justice for every child and adult who has faced unspeakable horrors and watched their abusers go unpunished. And most importantly, we are here to help end the fear that grips the victims of these vile predators every day. When a child predator abuses a child, they rob that child of their life. And when that abuser is put in a cushy prison for sometimes only two or three years, you rob the victim and their family of their justice. In this country, offenders receive a larger sentence for cheating the tax man than they do for abusing a child. And that, that is just alien to everything this country and its people stand for. This soft touch treatment of child predators has got to end. If an individual makes the decision to abuse a child, they forfeit their right to live in our communities. According to the Ministry of Justice, between 10 to 25% of child predators reoffend. And we have to bear in mind the real numbers are probably higher, as these are just the monsters that we catch. It is clear to me, and I'm sure to you, that prison does not rehabilitate paedophiles. And I, like many, do not want to be playing Russian roulette with the safety of our children. Therefore, to protect the children of our great nation, we must assume the worst and lock these monsters up. Currently, the average sex offender sentence. Do you guys know how, how much a sex offender gets in prison when they get caught, the average sentence? It's, it's just under five years. And that includes rapists who sexually assault children. Do you think five years is long enough for them in prison? No. Do you think five years is justice for a victim? No. It's a cruel irony that in this country, abusers are often let out of prison before their victim has even reached adulthood. That is why we are demanding a minimum of 25 years in prison for all child predators. Anything less is an insult to every individual who has suffered horrific abuse at the hands of these monsters. There were 54 new laws passed in the Parliament of 2020 to 2021. Yet none of these focused on helping survivors of child abuse. 
None of these increased sentences for child predators. This soft touch treatment of paedophiles has got to end. Our establishment cares more about lining their pockets by raising taxes or giving out corporate contracts to their friends than they do about protecting British children. There were record numbers of child abuse cases throughout the pandemic, yet the establishment did nothing to tackle this. There are no legal reasons why the government can't introduce a life sentence for all child predators, yet they choose to take a soft touch approach with child predators as a means of appeasing the paedophile lobby. That appeasement has got to end as it is jeopardizing the safety of our children, British children. There's, there's no limit on how many laws a parliament can pass. The parliament of 2010 passed over 3,500 new bills. Therefore, the only thing stopping us from getting justice and locking these monsters up indefinitely are politicians and unelected bureaucrats. It is time for that to change. So for everyone out there who has suffered immensely, who is feeling alone, or is worried that if they came forward, no one would believe them, know that we are here and we hear your cries for help. We will fight for you with every breath in our body. All you have to do is come forward. We will help. We will lock these monsters up for at least 25 years and we will get survivors of child abuse the justice they deserve. Thank you. Right, so to introduce our next speakers, I'm sure many of you know them. They're veterans, veter also veteran campaigners against child abuse. Could we please welcome to the stage Joe and Bobby Blair. First of all, I want to say thank you. Thank you. To me, Bobby, and everybody who organised this today, for each and every single one of you that turned up today. Thank you so much. For people that don't know me, Bobby, yeah? he won the biggest court case in Europe. Um, against the people that we and abused us. That was the Catholic Church. We, we stand today, and this is what people don't get. We changed 127 laws to protect children from being abused. The saddest part of that is that the government haven't implemented them laws. Yeah, so we know why they haven't done that. Is there a complicit in paedophilia? There's 160 MPs in the sex register. That can be anything from, sorry, touching your sex to paedophilia. We expose paedophilia. Because one of the main therapy, we will go our rights in a, in a, in a court on the Lord Heart and our solicitor, our, our barrister, we will go on the minimum to be able to tell the truth. We will not let anybody ever shut us down because they can. They can't take us, take us to court because it's a law abiding document. So we're allowed to say it as it is. The only one thing that we're not allowed to do, we're not allowed to, to tell everybody who raped and abused us because they get more protection than the victims do. We, we still travel around the country and do our best to get the message out there how bad child abuse is. Me and Herbert got raped in 1977 by the Christian Brothers in Northern Ireland. When I look at child abuse today, 
Three times a day, they're picking blood off the streets every single day of the week. And yet you'd be thinking, the police could do that job. But no, and this is what's going to happen. It's going to come down to each and every single one of us here to start protecting our young kids. Because that's this government system. Placing as, as, as anything, they don't care about children. They play the game and again and again. But when it comes to the grooming of kids, and the abuse of kids, and then the rape of children, this government doesn't care. I will make the changes to make sure that they do. I've said it million times, I'm going to carry on, sir. So I want to put a little steam around the Houses of Parliament on a Wednesday, the Prime Minister's question time, and I'm not going to let them go in until they start doing the fucking job. But we are going to do it. If you can't protect kids, then out you go. It's as simple as that. Um, I'm, I'm going to finish off in a minute. But like I said, there should be millions of us here. I appreciate every single person that's made the effort to get here today. But we need to start getting more and more members on the streets when it comes to protecting our kids. This is a start, and let's make it bigger and bigger and bigger. And let's start doing this in every town, in every city, at the day most properly, until the fucking deputy gets the message. But I'm just going to finish off on one more thing. Me and Bobby's were in the valleys today, because we are exclusive. Yeah. I have a lot of veterans with me. It turns me two o'clock in the morning, and you think you're suicidal. They're not suicidal, some of them, because it's a job they've done. They're a service they've done for the country. They're suicidal because they're the rape of abuse of children. They join the many some forces. They try and make a meme out of themselves because of how guilty they felt. I keep telling them they're not guilty. They're not to blame. The pain felt the touch to you. He's to blame. We've got too many peoples running around this country and always get away with it. It's time for us, the people of this country, to take a stand and say enough is enough. We are the people of this country. We are the ones that don't listen to BBC. The sky is an upper point now. We're sky and BBC today. We're not here. We're not going to be here. Exactly. We are the new media. We're going to get bigger and bigger. And we're going to make a difference to this country if we all stick together, work together, and support each other. And I think this all could do that. Yeah? Share everything out. Always. Support all groups. Always. If you don't like a particular person in a group, it doesn't matter. Yeah? There's still hundreds of people here today. Yeah? We can turn around. And if you know that, it's still all we've been here to support each other. And the best of all, we can start supporting our children. And our children's children. Let's do that difference. The arm's coming up now. <laughs> Thank you, boys. Um, for those that don't know me, I'm a survivor of UK grooming gangs. Um, my abuse happened in the Midlands. Now, we all have heard about what happened here and across most cities in this country. And so far, statistically, they estimate 19,000 of us have been groomed, trafficked, raped, abused and in many cases we have been exchanged for money for you can all guess what I'm trying to say um, we believe there's more than 19,000 over the last two years 
as I came into this, I, I put my abuse aside because I thought it was easier to lock it away. So for seven years, I didn't say anything. The establishment knew, I grew up in children's homes where they were complicit and I know for a fact that the people that worked in those homes were getting financial gain from allowing these predators to have our names, our addresses, even though we were all under child protection plans. Last year I told my story, not last year, sorry, the year before I told my story and it opens up a whole new world. And you don't realise that you are in a community of people who have all been abused. And there's so many aspects of abuse from sexual, physical, mental. And with grooming, it attacks every part of a human being. And it never leaves you. The scars can fade away, the physical ones. The mental ones will always be there. Many survivors suffer with PTSD. And I don't know if any of you suffer with PTSD. I know the veterans community do. It is crippling. You can be fine one minute and something can click and your whole world comes crashing down. And seven years I went undiagnosed. Medical professionals knew. And last year I got diagnosed. And I started to kind of network. And there's so many young girls and boys that have been affected by grooming gangs. And the problem is with the establishment and with the general public. We've had other organisations do demos for years about grooming gangs and because of who they are and other things they stand for, it's been pushed under the carpet because it's classed as political. This isn't a political matter, this is about human beings and this is about getting into little communities within your areas and educating them and changing their mindset. And anyone can be a perpetrator, it doesn't matter what colour you are, what race you are. There's a lot of female abusers out there who are also trafficked children. And I'm not talking about things that you that are just you read in, in stories. This is this is real. They put you in the back of the cars and they take you up and down the country in exchange for money. It's all to do with money. And what does money equal? Power. They have control over you. And there's been many survivors who have been through what I've been through, and they've been put in prison. There's survivors I can't mention due to poor voting restrictions, but they have been put in prison for telling their stories. Some of these girls have fought back and they've had charges against them. Justice, justice. There's also another woman I wanted to talk to you guys about who doesn't get any publicity really. Everyone that's within the community will know her name, Melanie Shaw. I can't go into details about Melanie, but for those that don't know her, go away and research. She spoke out very similar to what we went through but it was years and years and years ago. This has been going on for decades. When you look at the Melanie Shaw story, she was like, what, the 60s and 70s? When you go on to Sammy Woodhouse and the girls from tell that this is a generation thing. I'm the next generation from Sammy Woodhouse, all my 20s. You've got people in their 30s, 40s, and it's still going on saying, I can tell you that this is still happening today. And the worst time for girls like us, who are vulnerable, if we're in children's homes, society looks like we're rubbish was the lockdown, because it was easier to traffic children up and down the country because there was no social workers around because they were all on holiday. There was no teachers because they closed the schools. There was no house visitors. There was nothing. And also, a lot of these girls come out of the situation pregnant and can lose their children for just being a victim. You can also lose your children just for telling the truth. And this is, an, this is a whole institution, everybody collectively. It, it, it's still going on. And there's, I've heard comments over the last couple of months about the grooming gangs. And, and there's so, like I said at the start, there's so many other problems with child sexual exploitation, child abuse. Child abuse can happen in the home, anywhere. But we still need to keep these girls and these boys to the forefront of our minds. Because they are living their trauma every day to the day they die. And that will stay with them. And I'm asking you guys to start educating yourself, start learning about grooming, start to, to learn and educate on child sexual exploitation, and you could potentially save a child's life. All it takes is for one person to see something that they don't feel is right and intervene, and you could save that child. And just before I go, I want to remind everyone that we're all in the same boat, we're all like minded people, that's why we're here today. 
Please be kind to each other. Some of us can't make certain events because we have other commitments. Some of us can't do things because mental health being the biggest thing. Let's just be kind, let's understand each other. Let's go back to how it was years and years ago where it was like love thy neighbour where you were all friends. Let's start bringing British families back and start looking after each other because if we don't, this is going to just keep getting worse and worse and worse. And I promise you, it doesn't matter who you are, this can happen to you and your children. Thank you. I'd like to introduce a really good friend of mine, Billy from Pag UK. Billy is the most incredible man you'll ever meet. Oh, thank you again. I'm going to make it short and sweet for me today. I um, just want to tell you what PAG UK is and what we do. Parents Against Grooming UK are set up in 2012 to combat what was happening in my town of Rochdale. They'll tell you three girls were groomed. I'm going to tell you there were 49. There was 49 girls that were groomed, not three. They were told us there was nine men arrested. There wasn't nine men. There was 1,200 men. Hence, there's many more still on the streets of Rochdale unaccounted for allowed to carry on we at PAC UK now we are supporting survivors all across the country we're working with other places we're also working with PAC UK Cumbria who are in attendance today we're working together and this is what we all need to do there's been a lot of toxicity in this movement I've noticed over the last couple of years we've got to wipe that out we've got to stand together it's not going to work any other way it's for the kids and that is it we need to stand together before i go guys i just want to say something every time i've done a protest or a demonstration about this lady with us linda phillips for 35 years was a serial campaigner on child abuse from the cyril smith era this lady was the first person to stand up and spoke out unfortunately for pack uk and unfortunately for everybody else lady lot lost her life but we, we can't stand here today without her because she's the one who started it for us. So today I cannot stand here without mentioning her. So I want to thank you for the platform. I want to say I'm standing with you, we stand for you, we stand with you every step of the way. Thank you. Thank you very much, Billy. Right, next up we have Gemma Lester. Who is here to? She's a parent of a survivor, and she's here to tell her story. So can I have Jenna to the stage? Just here for Jenna, everyone. Oh, Jenna! 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 Oh, I was a parent of a child raped, I've had no help or support, nothing, absolutely nothing. Um, I've struggled to deal with what happened. I lost everything, by my home, my job, debt relief order, I was literally on my ass. I started drinking really heavily to cope. My youngest daughter, um, they got two dads, he took her from me. August 2018, my oldest daughter was 11. She went to spend the week with her family and his mum. Um, surrounded by family on her dad's side, something she's done for years. Um, excited to be going, same as always. I thought she was safe. My daughter left home an innocent 11-year-old girl about to start secondary school. She returned home broken. By who? Her own fucking dad. Her own dad. The one person she should have been safe with, she wasn't. There's no signs, no indications, nothing. Dirty paedophile bastard. He took her on a Saturday from her brother's house, said she had to see other family. He took her to an empty home, his sister's house. Um, I don't really want to go into it too much. Basically, he um he battered my daughter in order to rape her. Somehow she had the strength to fight him off. But it wasn't enough. 
Boomer's in the middle. She ran to the empty bathroom. He kicked the door in, tried to bath, and done it again. 11 years old. I guess what I'm trying to tell you is today, it's not just Muslim grooming gangs. It's not just innocent people on the street. Sometimes it's those that are closest to you that you would never think in your life. Now I have struggled and I have suffered and I lived this nightmare with my daughter. You know, she's 14 now, she's bedwetting, she's on medication. I've had no support, but I have to be strong for that girl. She is a survivor and this will not define her life. Now her dad got 13 years, but actually it's 10 years he got, 3 years plus. Um, committing a crime to further s commit a sexual crime, you know, basically beating her to rape her, and 10 years for assault by penetration. Now, this is a man that went not guilty from September until the court case, well, no, three weeks before the court case, the 18th of January, changed his plea from rape to assault by penetration. But he's still innocent in his eyes. Now, you tell me what innocent man would say he's guilty of raping a child? Now I hope and pray that justice will be done while somebody has had him in jail. That would be my justice. Thank you. So yeah, thank you very much everyone for coming along. Thank you so much for speaking to you and wrapping up with you. Um, I just have to say, this is, this is okay, the beginnings of our movement. From this, we want to build the largest movements that you might see the different children groups around the country so we can force change. We can't do this on our own, we all need to come together and keep coming to these tour dates. We'll be able to try and get some politicians along, maybe not to speak, but to come and watch in the crowd and see your passion and understand the feeling amongst our community and that we want to change. It's not good enough. We've got a very big for you guys, a good opportunity, but we're going to let. Yeah, you, you, thank you very much for this amazing lady who is having a great friend who has great history. Um, she went up to the last day today. So, uh, okay? Yeah, yeah. She's an incredible woman. Please show a bit of love. I'm going to the and and by a boy. A of the fire for the who is now 16 and that's from Manchester. He was better in love with his mother, Gordon, Gordon Mason, and her family in Scotland. The children of Rick McGrandson, who can go to his school for a year, he told McGrandson that if he didn't go with him, he would kill him, his little brother, and his mum. My dear old grandson, you've got a promise to share that one speaking of people. This is the first to tell us that one step off. You've got to be a nice to meet you, and I've got to be a nice to meet you. But my daughter was going to be a few hours and the wind went down. She was not going to be a nice to meet you. My grandson told him I don't know if he didn't kill this. Do you know that we don't know the way that this movement has created a state that states that things that um that is still um in August 2017 he was taken to swim in free station the way it pertains to a three-year-old girl and a thirteen-year-old boy. And then again, the level first just 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 talk you wanted to she's she's almost 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 she's
Oh, that's it. Oh, that's it. Oh, that's Sorry, speakers for today. So.